In 2021, the birth of a smoothhound shark named Ispera at a Sardinian aquarium astonished the workers. What made this birth even more remarkable was the fact that Ispera's mother had been living exclusively with other females for the past 10 years. However, it is entirely possible that Ispera had no father, and this phenomenon sheds light on other intriguing biological wonders, such as the existence of all female lizard species. Normally, in sexual species, sex cells contain half the required number of chromosomes to create a viable embryo. Thus, an egg cell must be fertilized by a sperm cell to obtain two complete sets of chromosomes. Nevertheless, certain species with sex cells can undergo a form of asexual reproduction called parthenogenesis, derived from the Greek term meaning virgin origin. During parthenogenesis, an unfertilized egg cell develops into an embryo by doubling its own chromosome count. Some animals exclusively undergo parthenogenesis, while others have the ability to reproduce both sexually and parthenogenetically. Surprisingly, parthenogenesis has been observed in over 80 different sexual vertebrate species, including Komodo dragons, specific types of turkeys, pythons, and sharks. These discoveries typically occurred when females unexpectedly gave birth while in captivity. Ispera's birth could potentially be the first documented account of parthenogenesis in smoothhound sharks, and scientists have also confirmed parthenogenesis in certain wild snake populations. However, determining the number of fatherless creatures roaming, slithering, and swimming out there remains challenging without extensive genetic analyses at the population level. So, why does parthenogenesis occur at all? Scientists speculate that parthenogenesis could have evolutionary advantages in certain contexts because, let's face it, sex can be burdensome. Mating and its associated demands and rituals are time-consuming, energy-intensive, and expose individuals to predators, sometimes leading to fatalities. On the other hand, parthenogenesis requires only one parent. In specific situations, certain organisms resort to parthenogenesis. For instance, mayflies may default to parthenogenesis if males are unavailable, which is particularly advantageous considering their short lifespan of only a day or so for reproduction. Parthenogenesis can also facilitate rapid population expansion. During abundant food conditions in the summer, P. aphids rely on parthenogenesis, enabling their population to flourish. In the autumn, however, they switch back to sexual reproduction. Conversely, some organisms such as aphids, katydids, lizards, geckos, and snakes solely reproduce via parthenogenesis. Therefore, the question remains, why do other animals still engage in sexual reproduction? Scientists propose that sexual reproduction compensates for its limitations by providing long-term benefits. It enables individuals to combine their genetic material, resulting in increased genetic diversity. This diversity proves advantageous when faced with challenges, as beneficial mutations can be selected and detrimental ones can be eliminated without jeopardizing the entire population. Conversely, in a parthenogenetic population, individuals can only reproduce using their own genetic material. Muller's ratchet, a theory, suggests that this can lead to a detrimental accumulation of harmful mutations over time. Eventually, after thousands of generations, the population may experience a mutational meltdown where individuals become compromised and unable to reproduce, ultimately leading to extinction. While this entire process has not yet been witnessed in nature, scientists have observed the presence of harmful mutations in parthenogenetic stick insects that are absent in their sexual counterparts. Only time will reveal whether these mutations will result in extinction. However, certain parthenogenetic species appear to have mechanisms to avoid a mutational meltdown. For instance, New Mexico whiptail lizards emerged through hybridization between two lizard species, giving rise to an all-female species. As hybrids, their genome consists of a combination of chromosomes from their two parent species, providing them with a significant level of genetic diversity that may contribute to their long-term survival. Deloig rotifers, on the other hand, have been reproducing parthenogenetically for 60 million years. They may have achieved this by incorporating genetic material from other organisms, such as fungi, bacteria, and algae, as approximately 10% of their genes originate from these external sources. 
Although the exact mechanisms behind these processes remain unclear, their effectiveness is evident. To fully unravel the mysteries of reproduction, further research is necessary, accompanied by the anticipation of more surprises akin to the discovery of Ispera, the parthenogenetic smoothhound shark.